This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hi guys. I hope everyone's doing super dandy today because for today's video, we're gonna be making a swimsuit. And I know I'm a little late to the party because summer started like a month ago, but better late than never. Anyways, for today's tutorial, I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to make a swimsuit just from some swimsuits you guys have in your closet, or if you have a swimsuit you're not too fond of, you can just use your underwear and a bra. I have some fabric here, some swim fabric that I'm gonna be using for the swimsuit, and then I have a whole bunch of swim pieces that I like the shape of, so I'm gonna be using these to make my pattern. I'm gonna be going for a kind of a swoop kind of neck like this, not like a traditional bikini, and then I'm also gonna go for a high-waisted bottom or kind of a mid-rise bottom. I just have one fabric because I want to make it reversible. I don't have a liner. I want it to be seamless. I want it to be really, really clean, and for this, you actually don't need a serger or any fancy machines. You only need a regular sewing machine with a zigzag stitch. That's all I had to say, so let's begin this below average tutorial. So typically when I'm making my own patterns, I like to go all out and I like to draft it, make a pattern, and then cut it out precisely. But today, I'm feeling extra lazy, so what I'm gonna do, I'm literally just gonna fold the fabric and then draw the swimsuit on top of it. Yup, that's what I'm gonna do today. Even though this is pretty expensive fabric, I'm still gonna risk it for the biscuit. So once you have your fabric all ready to go, right sides together and pinned on the side, you can go ahead and fold it once over. You can take your swimsuit and fold it in half, beginning in the front of the swimsuit so the straps look like that, and you're gonna lay it down on the fold. Next, I'm just taking a washable marker and I'm tracing around it with a half inch seam allowance and then I am adding a little bit more to the front of the top because it was a little shallow, the top swoop. So I made it a bit higher up and then once you have that, you can go ahead and touch it up, take your scissors, cut it out, and then your pieces should look like something like this. And then you pretty much just repeat those steps for every single piece. So right now I'm just working on the back of the top and it pretty much looks the exact same as the front except it's just a little bit more tinier because you don't really need a lot of fabric in the back, you know, you wanna show off your back maybe a little bit more. And then for the bottoms, it's a little tricky for doing the front like crotch area just because the booty kinda is big so you kinda have to lift up the booty flaps or the butt flaps, I don't know what you wanna call them, but you have to lift them up and then try to trace it that way. It does take a little bit more effort and mental thinking, but I believe in y'all, you guys can do it. It should just look something like that. Now that we have all eight pieces cut out, now we can finally get onto our sewing machine. And I'm gonna be using my serger here because my sewing machine doesn't have a zigzag stitch, so I'm gonna be using my serger. So you can either use your serger for this part or you can use your zigzag setting on your sewing machine. Now you guys gotta come back and be personal with my fabric again because I gotta show you what to do next. So this part may seem a little strange, but you just gotta, gotta stick with me for a minute. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your pins or your clips and you're gonna pin together the bottom piece of the back to the bottom piece of the back. So the same piece you cut out and you want right sides together. And you're gonna do this for every single piece, which is a little strange in sewing, sewing the front and the front together, not like the front and the back together, but it's gonna work out, trust me. I, I know I don't say that confidently, but I've done this already, so I know it worked out. So now that we have it pinned together like this, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna sew the neckline here from one side to the other. I'm gonna sew the two armholes, and then I'm gonna sew the bottom here. We're gonna leave the sides here open and then the top of the straps here open. And then for the bottoms here, we're gonna sew the two leg holes together and we're gonna sew the top, which kind of doesn't really make sense, but hopefully as we go on, it'll start to make sense. So we're leaving the crotch and the sides wide open for now. We'll close them later, don't worry. So now I'm just pretty much doing what I just mentioned, where I'm just sewing in those places I pointed to, and I'm using my serger because I don't have a zigzag stitch on my sewing machine. And you definitely need a little bit of stretch in your actual thread, or not the thread, but you know what I mean, in the stitch. And if you don't, then your swimsuit will rip when you try to put it on and possibly just like break. And we don't want a swimsuit that can break. That's like the worst thing for a swimsuit is for it to break. 
So we're just gonna take a quick break from the sewing because today's video is actually sponsored by Squarespace. I personally started using Squarespace back in college when I started my business, and since then I have been using it. At first, my website just listed all the services I offered, but then as it grew, I was able to add an e-commerce store and also a blog. It is super easy to create a professional website with Squarespace, so if you guys wanna try out Squarespace or get a domain, I do have a coupon code for you guys where you guys can get 10% off. All you have to do is use my coupon code Jenna Phipps, and you guys will get 10% off your domain or website. Okay, it's elastic time now. For our swimwear, we need to add some elastic around the legs, around the waistband, because we want it nice and snug. So for the elastic, you're not gonna use just any elastic. You're gonna wanna use a chlorine proof or a chlorine resistant, something that, you know, can withstand chlorine. I originally bought this really fancy elastic online. It's like a nice rubber one. And for some reason, I thought, Bigger is always better. And it's not always better. I needed the smaller ones. So I raced over to my fabric store this morning and this is the only elastic they had that was good for chlorine. This is what I'm using, but there's a ton of different elastics out there that are good for chlorine. So you just need one of them. And preferably something that's like a quarter inch or three quarters of an inch, something like that. Just not a half inch, just something smaller than a half inch. So for this elastic thing, what I did to start off, because it was a little tricky to start it off at the beginning, was I rested elastic over top, I clipped it, and then I put it underneath my serger and then started it that way, and that was a little bit easier, and then you take the clip off and then you can kind of just go with the flow, just hold the elastic and hold your fabric close together. Then when you get to the end, you can just trim it and you can just work with the huge long elastic string that you started with, and then this is what it should look like. If you're doing it with a zigzag stitch, it should be easy peasy and you shouldn't have any trouble, but with the serger, it's a little bit tricky. And I'm just adding elastic to every single seam that I've already done. You don't have to do front and back of the seam. Just pick one side of the fabric and put the elastic on that side for every single seam. This is nice with the elastic. I gotta say, I'm happy I got the elastic and sewn it into all of the seams because you can just see here, it just has like a nice little stretch to it. And I just feel like this is gonna hug my body so nicely. And when I go down the water slides this summer, you know, I won't flash anyone now. Now that we're done that, we can move on to actually putting all these pieces together. So I'm gonna take the back piece of the top here, so the smallest piece here, and I need to turn it right side out. And I'm gonna need to use my handy dandy strap turner, that's what it's called. Just because I made my straps really small here, so it's gonna be a little tricky to kind of flip them right side out. So I'm just gonna hold them through with this. If you use a strap turner, you just like put it through the inside and then you just like hook it on to the end where some thread is, you pull it through. Look at this, come on. I thought this was gonna be a lot more satisfying. There, it's turned right side out. Here it is, here's the back. So I need this right side out, and then I also need the front of the bottom right side out, which will be a lot easier to flip because it's a big boy. And then there's the front of it. So now your top should kind of look like this where you have one right side out and one inside out. And what you're gonna do next is you're gonna take your right side out one and you are gonna tuck it inside the inside out one so they're right sides together. Probably be easier to do this on a table. Let me show you. So now I'm just showing you in like speed racer speed of me just putting the top inside the top and I'm just using my strap turner to actually pull the straps through but I recommend you making the straps a lot larger, like wider because I didn't realize I made them that small so just make them a little bit bigger than you think you know, they're gonna be just, you know, add more than half inch seam allowance to the straps and that's how I did mine and then I pinned the sides and then for the bottoms, did the same thing which obviously was a lot easier so um, just make thick straps and then it should be easy peasy because that was my only thing that I kind of regret is making the straps a little, little, little too skinny. I want them thick. I want them thicker so I might actually make another top so I have two versions but who knows. Sorry, I got a little rant there, so I'm back to the video. What you're gonna do is where you pinned here, you want all the fabrics together, so it should be four layers, and then you're gonna sew those layers together. So the side of the top, the top of the straps, and then we're gonna go into our sewing machine, your zigzag, or your serger, and you're just gonna sew them straight through. Yeah, four layers of fabric. It's 
pretty simple, except for the sides of the top, one side you're gonna have to leave a hole, which I'm gonna show you in just like right here. I think I'm doing it right here. Come on, come on, you're slow. Hurry up, hurry up. Come on, Jenna, hurry up. Oh, gosh dang, I am really slow. Okay, here. I do like half and then I went off and then I do it again on the other side because we need a little hole because we need to actually flip it right side out to like finish the top and I'm doing that for the bottom so I think I did it in the crotch area but you can do anywhere that you want to do on the sides or the crotch area you just need to leave a little tiny hole that's probably about two inches wide so you guys can flip it you know right side out Okay, so it's finally time to turn them right side out. So what I'm gonna do is the little hole I've left at the crotch here, I am just gonna dig my fingers into here and grab the fabric. And it should be pretty easy to flip it right side out. Just like this. Ooh, so excited. Look at the bottoms! <laughs> These look so cute! Oh my goodness, I'm so excited to try them on. Other than we need to, you know, fix a little bit, but they're almost there. They look cute so far. And then for the top here, which I'm a little nervous about because I made the straps a little tiny. And then for the top here, I'm doing the same thing where I'm just pulling the fabric out of the hole. Bam, bam, bam. We got some skinny straps. And here is the top. So now to finish it off, all we have to do is just close the hole here. So I'm gonna do that on my sewing machine. So for the last step now, all we have to do is just fix this, you know, little hole we made to flip it right side out. So this is pretty simple. All we have to do is we take the fabric and we tuck it inside so you don't see the raw edge. And then you take your pin and you just pin it down and then once you have it pinned, go to this bad boy over here, do a straight stitch, which I will show you. And then we're done. We're finally done the bikini. Or swimsuit. Is it a bikini? Or is it a swimsuit? I'm done! So, I'll show you guys now. Here it is. Here's my swimsuit. I made today. I am just like so impressed with myself that I made this. It fits perfect. It doesn't feel like it's gonna come off. Like I was a little worried. Like what if they make it and then it's like loose or just like, you know, flimsy and you go down a water slide and you flash everyone. But not with this one. This one is snug on there and it feels really good. Like I feel very secure in it. Here it is up close. You can see it fits so well and it's so cute. It's my favorite swimsuit now. I really don't have many swimsuits, so I'm really happy that I finally have at least one really cute one and I made it myself. I think that's it. I think that's it for today's video. So I hope you guys all enjoy today's tutorial or below average tutorial on how to make a swimsuit for summer or for the water slides at the beach where wherever you're going. But that is it. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. If you guys do try it out and make your own swimsuit, tag me on Instagram at Jenna Phipps. I will have all the supplies and the fabric I have here linked down below in the description if you guys want to purchase anything to make a swimsuit, but I don't have anything else to say. I'm kind of hungry, so I'm gonna go. Have a great rest of your day, breakfast, dinner, whenever you're watching this, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.